I cheated on him with his best friend. A woman's voice seemed to appear from nowhere as I was sorting through my kitchen. As I closed the jar I was emptying, no voice could be heard. Glancing out my windows and seeing nobody, I chalked it up to a passerby talking a bit too loud. Especially too loud for a secret like that. I shrugged it off and got back to what I was doing, opening the jar again. I felt such a rush as I stole from the store. It was only a pack of chewing gum, but it felt so exciting, this time a man's voice. I closed the jar with more force this time. Was there some kind of support group happening in my garden? Where were these people? Getting frustrated, I opened the jar again and emptied it onto the counter. I was sick of reaching into it. I ripped a hole in my parents' painting and blamed the dog. I've been writing a novel for five years. I finished it yesterday, but I'm still scared to tell anyone. I've had a crush on my best friend's husband since the day we met. A flurry of voices spun through the air, each confessing their own secret. I must admit, after this, I must have looked crazy. I was going through the house, checking the volume of every device. Nothing seemed like it could have been playing any audio. Defeated, I returned to the kitchen. Wanting to just sit down and relax, I put the jar back in the cupboard. I only discovered that the lid wasn't on tight when it fell off and hit my foot. As I bent over to pick it up, another voice slipped out. I don't do my taxes. I started to connect the dots. Curious, I removed the lid again. I've been in love with my childhood best friend for decades. He started dating someone last week. I opened it again, this time only briefly. The toilet was... The voice stopped as soon as I closed the jar. I couldn't help but smile. As unexplainable as this was, it felt good to understand where this was coming from. Why? Or how? were different questions that I hadn't yet started considering. I had fun with this for a while. My parents think I moved out for college. I live two towns over with my boyfriend. I found a wallet with $500 and never returned it. I don't find her attractive anymore. I felt naughty, hearing all these little secrets out of people's lives. It was my own little secret. Quite frankly... I'm disturbed at how quickly I accepted it as normal, opening the jar and hearing an ethereal confession from a random person's own mind. Eventually they started to get dark. I poisoned my boss's coffee. He didn't turn up today. I sabotaged my friend's medication. His death was ruled an overdose. I only cried at my father's funeral because they found the murder weapon. I don't know if I wiped my prints correctly. This turn of tone took me by surprise. They were depressing, disturbing to hear. This was no longer a fun pastime, but a twisted game. I know of at least 36 people who have sinister secrets, ones that their lips may never speak. Secrets that would be with them until their deathbed were now my burden to deal with. The worst are the voices admitting that they plan to murder. I know realistically I have no way of stopping them or even finding out whose voice it is, yet I still feel like I'm at fault for knowing and doing nothing. I considered handing it to the police, wondering if it could help them with investigations. The more I thought about it, though, the more I realized this would need to go further than that. The government would have to get involved. The secret services would investigate. How could a jar know and do all this? They might even somehow use it for mass surveillance. Even if that was a sacrifice worth making, would they believe me? Or would they think this jar was my own strange creation with a cheap speaker and ignore me completely? Today, as I opened the jar for the final time, I heard the one voice I never expected. My own. I'm going to kill my dad with this knife I hold. I closed the lid, only then noticing the knife I was tightly gripping. I felt dizzy, like I didn't even understand where I was. 
A silhouette in the hallway caught my attention. My eyes focused to show my father standing in the doorway. How long had he been there? Did you just say you're going to kill me? What are you doing with that knife? I don't even remember my father coming to visit. I don't remember much of today at all, outside of listening to the jar. As my mind wanted to explain myself, my lips simply didn't move. I was frozen in a panic. How can you even begin to describe these events? He left my house as quickly as my mind had left moments before. I slammed the knife onto the counter as I threw the jar at the wall. I wanted this to be over. I wanted it to be a nightmare. But you can't wake up from reality, however daunting it may be. The jar shattered into a million pieces. Where I had expected to end these events, I only made them worse. A hurricane of voices echoed through my house. A million sentences, spoken at once, speaking forever. I cannot focus on a single one, yet I understand them all. I can hear the secrets of eight billion people. The world is a dark, deceitful place, and the very epicenter of that darkness lies in broken shards on my kitchen floor, reminding me that secrets are always surrounding us. We may think that our own untold tales are the only ones, but everyone around you, everyone in your life, they all have one. Some might say the secrets cling to you and never let go. I say that we cling to our secrets. I still hear them all. The symphony of the unknown becomes known.